check it. Whether it's your first time or you need a retreat, this is your place for video games and fresh beats. LB and me, LB and me, last benevolence of Kimmy and me. So about a month or two ago, I heard about this game called Babylon's Fall. Now, it just came out this last week, and I've, I've been super excited about it up until its release, because as we've mentioned before here on the channel, we've been trying to find good, loot-grindy co-op RPGs to play with each other and friends. It just seemed like this game would tick off a lot of boxes, as far as what we've been looking for. But for what seems like no reason at all, the internet has just been hating on this game. Like, super bad. I mean, even on their gameplay trailer, which I thought was cool, literally hundreds of comments were posted about how the game was gonna suck, or how it looked like a crappy mobile title, or how it felt uninspired and whatnot. One comment even complained about how there were no guns in the game. Uh, honestly, I just don't get it. What's wrong with the game? The graphics? Sure, they're different from what we're used to, and it ain't definitely gonna win awards in 2022 for outstanding visuals, but the game looked fine on my PC. I mean, I ain't trying to brag or anything, but uh, maybe this chip shortage got some of y'all struggling with them old dusty graphics cards. You know what I'm saying? Of course I'm joking, but even if the game's graphics aren't that great, does that really make the game that bad? Now that the game is out, I've gotten the chance to play it for myself, and I'm not only finding that the game is fun, rewarding, and very entertaining, but I've even discovered for myself that some comments made by some reviewers and journalists about the game were completely untrue. All of this got me thinking, what actually makes a game good? One thing that I noticed was that people have been saying that Babylon's Fall was released at a bad time because of Elden Ring and Lost Ark. And while that may be true, these are entirely different games that bring entirely different things to the table despite them being from similar genres. Judging a game's value off of another doesn't always work because different games tackle different genres, and even the way they tackle those genres are different giving emphasis on different aspects of those genres. For example, take Sonic and Mario, both platformers, both having 2D as well as 3D titles, but they both handle the genre differently. From the beginning, Super Mario Bros. has always been a simply paced platformer where the main goal of the game was to reach the end of a stage. Sometimes the game would reward the player for their curiosity if they tried going off the beaten path a little. But that's how Mario plays on a basic and fundamental level, give or take. Sonic, on the other hand, was originally de designed as a speed-based platformer where the objective was to beat each stage in as little time as possible, and the player would be rewarded by either not getting hit or saving as many of the collectible rings that they picked up along the way as they could. That's basic Sonic 101. Even though these are both platformers, you can't say outright that one is better than the other because they both handle the genre in a completely different way. Personally, I always preferred the use of speed in Sonic games, and whenever I played Mario, I'd feel the game was too slow, but that's just my opinion. I wouldn't seriously say that Sonic games were better than Mario, or vice versa. Now, we could talk about how comparing games could or could not work for an entire video, so we might do that in the future. But if comparing a game to another isn't always the best way to measure the value of a title, then what is? Some people use the graphics of a game to tell whether or not they like it. It's funny because if you ask a serious gamer if graphics are important, he might actually say that they're not. Until I started working on this video, I would have said the same thing because I've played so many great games that some might now say don't look that great. We might say something like, ah, nah, the gameplay is what is important. But actually, graphics do matter, at least when it comes to what the player expects from the game that they're playing. 
What? For example, Kimi and I talked about our love for Minecraft Dungeons, but one thing that I will say about the game is that I couldn't see myself completely replacing something like Fantasy Star Online with it. Because when I play a cooperative action RPG where I customize my character and build it out, I like to become immersed in the experience and really feel like I'm part of the world of the game, role playing as the character I've made. And with the way that Minecraft Dungeons looks, it's difficult for me to really feel that way about the game. I mean, don't get me wrong, the game looks great and they do a decent job of fixing up the environments and stuff, as well as the ambience and sound, but I just can't really get into the idea of living in a voxel world like that. This is the same problem that I get with every LEGO game that comes out. The cheesy appearance of the characters just snatches us right out of the experience, making it hard to take it seriously enough. See, so graphics do matter. If the way that the graphics appear distracts you enough to take you out of the experience or actually take away enough from the game to ruin what you would expect out of it, then it'll seriously impact your ability to get into a title. This is true for whether the game's graphics lack actual quality or not. Even if the graphics look really good, they could affect the game in a negative way. In some cases, maybe not that many, but it could happen. Sometimes we can get stuck on what mechanics and what features work and what don't, but at the end of the day, what we should really be asking ourselves when it comes to gameplay is, do I have fun playing this game? The core of a game is the gameplay, and yet that is the most subjective part of a game. This is why you can't trade another person's review for your own experience when it comes to playing a title. If a game is not fun, you arguably wouldn't be able to tell that without first playing the game for yourself. So if you were just watching reviews or trailers for a game, you wouldn't be able to say whether or not a game was good because you never tried it. You're skipping over the most essential part of determining a game's value. It's like food. You can't taste food simply by watching someone else eat it. You have to consume it yourself. You might say that games are different because the only thing you're not doing when you're watching someone else is controlling it. And that is only partially true if you're watching a review because a reviewer can show you what they want to show you, which is not always the entire experience. Watching video clips or listening to commentary might help in determining whether or not a game has the features or style of gameplay that might interest you, but you won't know for sure whether it's fun unless you actually play it. Reviewers should take responsibility in reminding players of that instead of just handing out scores to give the impression that they can decide for you what you should or should not buy. Each individual should measure the value of a game themselves, and the level of enjoyment that they get from that gameplay should hold the most weight in their opinion of the title. Now, one thing that you can definitely enjoy by watching someone else play is the story. But we should keep in mind that a story without gameplay is not a game anymore. Even titles like Life is Strange have interactive features and gameplay that can even be somewhat engaging when cleverly used within the context of their narrative. On the other hand, sometimes people might say that a good story can make up for bad gameplay, but that shouldn't always be the case because again, a game would no longer be a game if it didn't have gameplay. Gameplay is the core of the experience. It's the essential part of a game. Take this from a person who actually likes turn-based battle systems. Uh, we used to argue that we love JRPGs, mostly because of their stories, and we wouldn't really say much outside of that. But that didn't mean that the turn-based battles featured in a lot of those games weren't engaging. It's just that the highlight of those games were their stories. While I would argue that an elaborate story doesn't always have to be told if the gameplay is solid, in order for a game to jump from good to great, some sort of lore or story-based premise should at least be present to give enough life to the game's world. Sound design helps with breathing life into a game as well, with crunchy sound effects and atmospheric ambience, but music is more and more the often overlooked part of a game's makeup despite it being an important feature. Rather than trying out different genres or even making their own unique catchy tunes to match their vibe, 
more high budget games and even some indies are unfortunately relying on almost generic orchestral compositions that are similar sounding to cinematic movie scores. For the most part, music and games just don't sound like they used to. Still, there are some games that still have great and uniquely composed soundtracks, even unique orchestral soundtracks, but the ones that really shine with genre-bending music should be commended more often for standing out, and we should probably stop giving so much credit to these open world games for giving us five simple notes on a piano to pass for exploration music. Yeah, it may be creatively clever, and it may sound calming, relaxing, or even therapeutic at times, but it's quite lazy. Music may not be a make it or break it for whether a game is good or not, but it shouldn't be overlooked either. So what makes a good game? Well, unless everyone has the same exact opinions, that question would ultimately have to be answered by each person individually for each game that comes out. But if everyone honestly went into each experience on their own to judge them for themselves instead of waiting to hear what so-called professionals said first, it would probably encourage developers to be more creative, and it would probably help those who play the games that they develop discover more unique experiences as a result. Riding the hate train is easy, and let's be real, it can be fun, but it's toxic. And even the inclination to argue against that fact shows that we can be better. Want to give a game a 10 out of 10? That's fine. Just ask yourself if it excels in all of the different aspects that make up the overall experience. This means that the way it looks matches the theme of the game very well. The gameplay is exceptionally well made and fun. The narrative elements give life to the game, making it a believable experience and the music is memorable. A 10 out of 10 game should really excel in all or most of these aspects to be considered as such. And if you're trying to judge whether or not a game is good, you should be looking at it from the standpoint of whether or not it sufficiently delivers in terms of gameplay, graphics, sound, and story for you personally. Determining whether or not a game is good is about experiencing it and not letting others decide for you what to try for yourself. What do you think? What makes a game good? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment box below. And if you like our videos, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. And since we don't do ads for monetization, here's a shout out to our Patreon supporters who help us keep the food on our plates to create the stuff we create. We'll see you guys later.